And now for the most embarrassing episode of the podcast that we'll do all year, I'm going to be reacting to my League One predictions that I did at the start of the season. Some of these are horrendous, and I mean absolutely awful. Some of them borderline acceptable, others just straight up horrific. I was thinking, I did this yesterday, I thought, do I really want to put myself through this? Is it really worth it? But we're going to do it, I'm going to just laugh at some of them, because they are absolutely laughable at points. So, for example, we're going to start off with Crew. we'll look at the actual league table first. So, as an example, beginning with Crew, who finished 24th in the league, we're going to compare Crew to where I predicted them. So, we get a really nice comparison of where I predicted them. Oh boy, this will be a really good laugh. If you want to see more of this type of content, of course, the season is coming to an end. However, we've got lots of exciting content, even though the season is rearing to a conclusion. However, we've still got the playoffs, of course, as well. So some really exciting content coming to the channel. Leave a like and subscribe as well. It really helps the podcast, helps the growth of the podcast. We're so close to 1.3 thousand subscribers. So hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well. That way you'll be notified when I go live or do a recorded episode just like this one. Let's not miss about. Let's start off with crew. And let's see how we get on. So starting off then with Crew Alexandra, 24th in the league. Was they close? Not really. 15th, I predicted them. Of course, that's nine places lower than I thought they would finish. So not a brilliant prediction, but not a brilliant campaign for Crew. However, whichever angle you take when looking at this Crew season, when dissecting this Crew year, it has not been a good season at all. It was David Artel, he left a few months ago when their confirmation of relegation was confirmed. But however you look at it, the start of the season just didn't begin well, did it? And when you look at the summer they had, it was almost one of those where you just had to be a little bit more ruthless with your prediction. When I look back at the summer, they had lost both of their fullbacks. NG left the club, didn't he? Ryan Wintel left the club. Charlie Kirk, who was so good for them last season, he went to uh, Charlton. Ironically, didn't do very well at Charlton at all. And then he went on to Blackpool on loan, if I'm not wrong. But losing Charlie Kirk full stop, wherever it was, and however he did at his new club, he was brilliant for them last season. It was like 20-odd goal contributions for them. Of course, they were promoted last season as well, and they stayed in the league this year. Uh, well, last year, for this year. Of course, they're back now to League 2, uh, obviously, for, for the next one. But... When you look to the summer, it wasn't a good summer at all anyway. So you probably should, and I probably should have been a bit more ruthless with my prediction. Either way, I got it very, very wrong in the end. Nine places out. Not the worst one, which says quite a lot about the ones still to come. But yeah, 50th in the league, I predicted them. Rock bottom in the end. Not a good season for crew whatsoever. So next then we go to AFC Wimbledon, who finished 23rd in the league. I predicted them to come 21st. So, not that bad, really. Only two places out. Although I'm quite excited about getting my prediction quite close for Wimbledon. I don't think they'll be too pleased with their season as a whole. Of course, relegated. They'll be playing League 2 football next season. You know, they, they just did struggle. They, they struggled throughout the campaign. Had a few good results here and there. I know we played them at the start of the season at Oxford United and they beat us 3-1. They look like a very, very well-drilled side. Very good from set pieces. But pretty much from them, they really have struggles. Robinson, Mark Robinson was the manager uh, for the majority of the campaign. He left and the new manager that came in, he didn't get things really improving the, the way they would have wanted to. Ultimately, in, in the end, they got relegated. So not a good season for AFC Wimbledon. They're going to have to go again and hope, will they need to rebuild? Probably. There'll be a few players that will be leaving, but... I don't expect too many, uh, but ultimately they will be relegated. They'll be playing League Two football next year. Will they get promoted? We'll have to go and wait and see. But yeah, twenty third in the league they finished. I predicted them twenty first at the start of the season. I didn't think they were going to have a good year, and I was pretty right there. There we go. That's what I've gone with there. So twenty second, Doncaster Rovers, and I in the end put them sixteenth. Not brilliant. Six places out. Um, and for Doncaster Rovers, last year they had a really quite good year, to be honest. They had a really bad drop-off come the end of the season when they lost Darren Moore, who went to Sheffield Wednesday, who at that point were in the Championship. Of course, they got relegated in the end. But... When they had Darren Moore in charge last season, Doncaster, a really, really good side, playing really good football, you know, up the end, they were in the playoffs fairly comfortably. Um, and they lost Darren Moore, and I've never seen such a drop-off. They lost their manager, and it was an absolute car crash end of the season. In the end, I think they finished about 12th or 13th, really, really bad end of the season. You know, if you look at it from a more general perspective, it probably wasn't a bad year really last year for Doncaster, but where they were... It really was a real drop off. And they came into this season without Darren Moore. They, obviously, the new manager got appointed in the summer. Um, was it Richie Wellens, wasn't it? Richie Wellens, who, who came in. And he never really got it going. Really, really quite poor uh, poor season when he until he got sacked. Uh, then the assistant manager um, came in. And then even then, really, it hasn't got much better at all. A little bit of an improvement here and there, but not enough to keep them up. And in the end, they finished 22nd. But... Yeah, pretty much ever since Darren Moore left last season, it's just been a downward spiral for Doncaster. I thought it wouldn't be so down, for a da so much of a downfall they would stay in the league, but apparently not. I predicted them to finish 16th. In the 
defend, they finish 22nd. They'll be relegated into League Two next season. Next, then we go to Gillingham. Of course, that was the team that finished in 21st. I went with 18th for Gillingham. So only three places out, to be honest. So not that bad. But for Gillingham, it's quite bad. They'll be relegated. And, you know, the new manager that came in, Neil Harris, he tried to sort of get something going. He picked up a few good results, maybe a glimmer of hope. They're out the relegation zone for a period of time. But in the end, it just wasn't enough. And, you know, a few poor results and sort of the, the, sort of the last three, four games of the season, which is crucial when you look at the run-ins of, of these sides. And also, again, the start of the season under under Steve Evans just wasn't good enough. And, you know, he was almost thrown into a position where he needed to have one gone and incredible run, well, not, not incredible, but a very, very good run compared to their relegation rivals to get out of the mess that he'd been that he'd sort of joined with. And it wasn't in the end enough. They lost to Rotherham on the final day, which confirmed their relegation to League Two. And Neil House was very, very open in his post-match interview. Very, very interesting, but honest post-match interview for the Gillingham man. And the Gillingham manager, very, very clear with what he wants to do. Very, very clear with where he wants to take the football club. And he, I think it was a very, very honest assessment of the campaign. So, in the end, Gillingham, they finished 21st in the league. I predicted them 18. So, I got it wrong. But, ultimately, they'll be playing League 2 football next season. Not a good season for them at all. So, 20th in the league, of course, was Fleetwood Town. I went with 14th at the start of the season when Simon Grayson was in charge. I thought with the players they brought in, maybe they would be safe. But, you know, it just had, didn't really click for Simon Grayson at all. Didn't really click at all. Didn't really get the players going. Didn't really get any style of play and the results were just really really quite poor they lost 3-1 I think it was wasn't it to Oxford United uh sort of that was his last game of the season that was back in uh back in before Christmas wasn't it or was it just after Christmas so it really wasn't a good season for Simon Grayson as an individual in the end Fleet will come away a little bit relieved very relieved really I did thought they I did think they would be safe by a much bigger margin but in the end it wasn't even though they lost to Bolton the final day they still just about stayed up by one position in fact only on goal difference they stayed up in the end I was six places out for that one but in the end uh, yeah Fleetwood finished 20th in the league and all they'll care about is staying in the league congratulations to them they'll be playing league on football next season Next, then we go to 19th in the league, who in the end was Morecambe. A remarkable, remarkable outcome, really, with them. Um, five places higher than I thought they'd finish, because ultimately I thought they were doomed. I thought they were uh, destined for relegation. I thought they finished bottom of the league. I predicted them 24th. And like I said, when you look at it, it is a remarkable achievement at Morecambe. All the teams uh, got relegated, that did get relegated in the end, weren't the sides promoted from last season. So that says really quite a lot about the sides that came up. And again, Cole Stockton, a key man for, for, for Morecambe this season, a very, very key player when he terms of scoring goals and what he's done for Morecambe this season. But the entire, I think, football club, and they even they've had a change of manager as well. And the new manager that came in, he's picked up some really important results come the end of the season. In the end, they did it by two points uh, in safety. So it wasn't, you know, a, a, they weren't safe by 50 points, but they certainly, certainly did stay in the league and 19th in the league. They'll certainly, certainly take that. I was one who predicted them to finish rock bottom, destined for relegation. They stayed in the league, finishing 19th. Fair play to Morecambe. They are staying in League One. So 18th in the league, of course, that was Shrewsbury Town who finished there. Was I right? Nearly, I went with 19th for Shrewsbury. It's only one place out. I'll certainly take that. I certainly will take that. Um, they finished one place higher um, than I thought they would. But I, I, I did do that prediction knowing that Shrewsbury, I think they would be safe and they would, uh, they would stay in the league. Um, they didn't have a squad, I think, that was going to be as bad as the teams that I thought would get relegated, um, which I was right there, but not really because the teams that I th thought would get relegated didn't get relegated, or at least uh, one of them did. But other than that, the rest didn't. Um, and also, as well, I think Shrewsbury don't didn't have a, didn't have a summer transfer window that they would have wanted to. A lot of issues, of course, their manager suffered really badly from COVID, didn't he? So he was in a really bad place. So thankfully, and most important, um, most importantly, compared to football, he's you know back on the touchline, which is actually remarkable, um, to be honest. So fair play to him, um, and and they've stayed in the league. So fair play to Shrewsbury. Really quite strange campaign. Really quite strange summer window as well. But in the end, they do stay in the league. I thought they'd finish at 18th. Sorry, 19th. Finish 18. So I'll take that. I think Shrewsbury fans would certainly take that as well. Fair play to them. Next, then we go to 17th. I went with uh, not Lincoln City, who did finish at 17th. I went with Lincoln City finishing 10th. Um, so I was seven places out, which isn't great, but I was sort of basing Lincoln City off last season, which I think was a pretty fair thing to do. They finished in the playoff final. Um, I didn't think they would be back in those top six. I, that's why I put them 10th in the league. I thought they would just be outside the sides fighting for that for that top six, maybe fighting, but in the end, just not really um, able to sort of really be competing for those playoff places. In the end, very, very wrong, because at the point, at one point in the season, they were looking like a side that could even be going down. Uh, they're safe in the end, 17th in the league. Of course, Michael Appleton has just left his role at Lincoln 
Lincoln City. But a brilliant season last year. Uh, I didn't really expect Michael Appleton and this Lincoln City side to have such a drop-off. It seems as though this season didn't really get going. Um, to predict a team like Lincoln City finishing 10th, I thought they probably maybe that'd be a bit harsh on Lincoln City based on the side they got to the playoff final. Um, but in the end, it was much worse than that. 17, seven places out. Not a great prediction, but not a great season for Lincoln, especially when you compare it to the highs of the season before. But in the end, yeah, Lincoln City got that very, very wrong. Um, but I mean, it could have been much worse. I was going to put them higher. Uh, thankfully, I didn't. Uh, 10th in the league for them in the end, but they finished 17th in the official table. Next, then we go to 16th, who were Burton Albion. Where did I put Burton? I put them 12th. So 16th, 12th, four places out. I'll technically take that. Um, but again, you got to remember that I was basing it off the season before as well. I think that was a, that was something that I was really sort of taking into consideration. And of course, the summer window. And a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have happened through the campaign. Managers go, and you can't predict that. Um, but Burton Albion, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, he came in last season. Absolutely the great escape, people were calling it. Of course, he joined when they were rock bottom of the league. In the end, they finished about 17th, wasn't it, in the end. Had a really, really good season um, when he joined, and he really got the players going, brought some really good players in January, and in the end, saved them. And I thought this season... Maybe they'd, be, they, maybe they'd do a little bit better. And they started this season really, really well. They were starting in those playoff places. They were hovering around 7th, 8th or ninth, And then a really, really bad run. Um, and a few inconsistent performances after that. And they, in the end, finish 16th. Will Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank be happy with that? Probably not in the end. Um, we know he's got really, really high ambitions and high expectations. He wants to be competing. Um, of course, Burton Albion are definitely not the size of a football club that should be in League One. But they are, and fair play to them. And they've been higher as well. They've been in the championship, haven't they? So, to be honest, 16th in the league for a side like Burton Albion, it shouldn't be a bad finish. But Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank was certainly uh, wanting to finish higher than that next season. Will he be there next season? We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I finished them, uh, I predict them to finish 12th. In the end, finish 16th. There we go. That's what I've gone with there. So, four out. It's not brilliant, but, but it's not the worst. So, 15th then, Cheltenham Town finished there, and I thought they were destined to get relegated, similar to Morecambe. I owe Cheltenham and the other team I'll mention in just a second a huge, huge apology, because I predicted them to come uh, 23rd in the end. So, in the end, I was... Uh, how many places was I out? <laughs> it's just horrible. Eight places out. They finished eight places higher than I thought they would, um, and they had a really, really good season, and like I said, I probably wasn't the only person that thought they were destined to get relegated, but they have had a really good campaign. They've been a really quite difficult side to beat, really difficult side to, to break down at points and when they go one and up you know we played them as Oxford United right at the start of the season um, and even when we played them the second time we did win in the end didn't we or was that a draw um it was a really tight game. It might have been a draw, actually. Um, but I, but I remember playing against them. They're so quite, they're so difficult to break down, and they're very, very good on the break. They've got a huge, amazing striker in Alfie May, who's been so, so good this season, and scored twenty one of goals this year, and he's been absolutely tremendous for them. Um, such a, such a brilliant option going forward. He's sort of been a player that's been also really good at taking chances, but also just creating chances out of nothing and being such. And that's the player you need when you're a side that get promoted. Having a player like a striker like Alfie May who will get it will win you games. When or 2-0 or win you games, you know, 2-1, really quite tight games and he'll do something out of nothing. You know, he beat Oxford 1-0 with a goal from Alfie May, took a chance. They probably only had about two chances in the game, but Alfie May takes one of those chances and they win the game 1-0. They'll defend well. They've got William Boyle at the back, a really good defender. So they've got really quite good players in crucial positions. They've got Will Boyle who sort of really dictates the back four, or they play a back three, don't they, a lot of the time, really, really quite well. And they've also got a striker who takes their chances, and Alfie May, I mean, he's got, what, four goals against Wickham this season, away from home, 5-5, and those are the sort of results that will keep you in the league, so fair play to Cheltenham, I got that very, very wrong, in the end, eight places higher than I thought they would, I thought they finished 23rd, they, in the end, of course, finished 15th, fair play to Cheltenham Town, they defy my expectations massively, so fair play to them, congratulations to them, uh, really, really good season. And again, another apology I've got to give to is, of course, 14th in the league, Cambridge United. I thought they finished 22nd, so exactly the same as Cheltenham, eight points difference. And similar to Cheltenham, really, a side that have just been such a problem for a lot of a lot of sides. And a lot of sides that I think thought they could easily beat Cambridge at the start of the season. And even when they were doing well, a lot of teams were a little bit, a bit complacent going into a game. Why would you be? Because Cambridge United have shown throughout the campaign that they're such a, such a good side. They've got some really good players. Adam May just highlighted them as is a player of the season. They've got a real variety of players. Sam Smith up front this season scored a lot of goals. Um, 
And they've just been, again, very, very good. Play really good football. A really attractive brand of football. Mark Bonner, I think the manager they've got there, very, very good. I think he, he'll go I think he'll go really quite far. I think he's linked to the QPR job at the moment. I don't think he'll get it, but I think he's been linked to it. And even if he are linked to a job like that, that just shows that the sort of um, performance you've had as a manager through the season. So fair play to Cambridge United and, and, and Mark Bonner. What they've done this season, really well balanced in both areas of the pitch. Stayed in the league comfortably, so comfortably in the end, 14th. Fair play to them. But if they build on that for next season, I think they've got a really, really exciting side there. So yeah, 14th in the league, Cambridge United. I thought they finished 22nd. Got that very, very wrong. Eight places out in total. I do apologise, but fair play to them. So next at them, 13th in the league, Charlton Athletic. I got this wrong uh, for the opposite reasons I did for Cambridge and Cheltenham. I thought they'd finish much better than that. I think, Cam- I think, I think to be fair, Charlton fans probably thought that as well. Um, I thought they'd finish fourth in the league. So I got that nine places out. They did nine places worse uh, than I predicted them. I thought Charlton Athletic were going to have a much better season. Of course, when I did this, uh, Adkins was in charge. They had a really quite aggressive summer in the window, um, in, in that summer transfer window. And I thought they come into this season after a season last year where they bought in Nigel Adkins right at the end of last year, wasn't it? And in the end, they just missed out on the players. I thought you got to have a good seat. You've got to have a good summer, sorry, which they did do. They brought in the players like Charlie Kirk. They brought in others as well. Sean Clare from Oxford. Ryan Stockley approved they made, they made that permanent. Or did they bring him on, bring him that season? Or did they have him last year? I can't quite remember. But even so, they, they definitely brought him in in the summer for, for something. And along with others as well, that, not, that, no, not just those three, a lot of really good players, really quite aggressive in the summer. A side that really looked like they were going to be spending the money, but also spending the money to get in those right areas, get in the top six, really compete in the promotion places. And it just hasn't worked out, has it? Really, really hasn't worked out. Of course, we now look at them finishing third, uh, 13th um, in the league and with Johnny Jackson in charge. Of course, a, a legend, um, a captain legend um, at Charlton. I he came in as an interim caretaker job and did such a good job. He got appointed um, as... Um, as the permanent manager and at that point they were really still knocking on the door of those playoff places and then an awful awful run it went from bad to worse they went as low as about 16th 17th in the league um they just went on a horrific horrific run so i've got it back sort of come the end of the season in the end finished 13th which you know it, it's poor it really is quite poor but when you compare it to where their run was a few weeks ago it, it, they'll probably take that but it's still um Nine places out, nine places lower than I thought they'd be, Charlton Athletic. They're going to have to have a really big summer. They're going to have to bring in some really, really quite different players. I think there's going to be a real, quite a big overload in terms of players leaving and in terms of players coming. And they need it. They really do need a freshening up. I think Johnny Jackson will really want to do that. But yeah, I've gone with Charlton Athletic. Um, I haven't gone with Charlton Athletic. I should have done. I feel like very, very wrong there. I thought they finished fourth. In the end, finished 13th. Not a great season for them. But a big summer. We'll see where they are next year, of course. So halfway then, 12th in the league. Acton Stanley finished there. Where did I put Acton Stanley? 17th. Not a good prediction, that. Five places out. Um, and I don't really know why I did that. Because Acton Stanley, over previous seasons, they've been a real banana skin for a lot of sides. They've been a banana skin for sides, especially looking to compete in the, the higher ends of the table. And they were the same last year. Remember, they beat Portsmouth on the final day at Fratton Park. They allowed Oxford to get in the top six. You know, they shouldn't have gone to Fratton Park and beaten Portsmouth. But they went and did that. They went and did that. And... Again, they didn't have a bad season even. They probably finished around that last year as well. Definitely around mid-table. A really good campaign for them. Of course, uh, Coleman, who's been there now for, for, for a long, long time, he knows Axel Stanley like the back of his hand and he knows how to get the best out of, out of so many of these players. And, and fair play to him. Of course, McConville, Sean McConville has been brilliant for them uh, this season. Um, and a really key player to why they finished 12th in the league. And certainly take that. But I got that prediction very, very wrong. I thought they finished 17th. They finished 12th. Fair play to Axel and Stanley. But I got that wrong. Five places out. But a good season for Axel and Stanley, however you look at it. So, 11th in the league, Ipswich Town, another shocker. I thought they finished nine places higher than they did. I thought they finished second in the league. And the way they approached that summer transfer window, I thought there's no way on earth they can't at least be in the top six. The aggressive style of a transfer window they had, spending some serious, serious money, bringing in a lot of players. And in the end, I said this, I think I might have mentioned it, is there a way that they brought in too many players? Could the, the the way that they sort of just didn't really have the, I can't think of any other word, chemistry, a disjointed feeling within that squad with the amount of players coming in, did that affect Ipswich Town? I think it has done. At the start of the season, really, really quite poorly. Definitely not the start of the season that they would have wanted. Of course, uh, they had uh, Steve Cook at the start of the campaign, but that really, really didn't go the way that they've wanted to. Um, 
And then, of course, they brought in um, Kieran McKenna, the ex-Manchester United coach. So, interesting to see what he can do next season. He tried to come in and maybe rescue themselves a really late push to the top six. It wasn't to be. A few inconsistent performances, a few inconsistent results across that campaign just since he came in, ultimately. Um, and in the end, they, they couldn't really quite rescue what I'd say is a, is a poor season for Ipswich. I know they'll probably have a different opinion. I know they'll have multiple opinions on it. Of course, they will. That's the beauty of football. But I think when you compare it to what they did in the window, compared to the, ex- the expectations, the ambitions they had at the start, out of the window and the start of the season, they really have fallen short. I certainly fell short with my prediction. I thought they'd finish uh, uh, I thought they'd finish second in the league. Nine places out. In the end, they finished 11th. But again, with a really good summer, a few more additions on top of a, what is a really quite good squad, which is really quite strange, but it is a good squad. Just there's a few key areas that are missing. With Kieran McKenna, a good preseason, a really exciting season next year. Could be around the corner, but I got it very wrong. Second in the league, I predicted them. 11th, they finished. So 10th in the league, Portsmouth finished there. I predicted them to come 7th, so three places out. Not a brilliant season for Portsmouth. I think inconsistency has been the message and been the, the real theme across Ports of this campaign. Just hasn't been able to get a really good run going for a long amount of time and for the, the right amount of time ultimately to, to get themselves in the, in, in the top six. And that really has let them down, unfortunately, for them. And, and maybe Danny Cowley, I don't know what his future looks like. I know a lot of Ports of fans or some Ports of fans, should I say, uh, maybe aren't so happy with what he's, what he's done, maybe expected to be in the top six at least this year. It, you know that isn't going to happen. Do you give him the summer again? Personally, for me, and I'm again, I'm no, I've got no opinion uh, or no valid enough opinion as a Portsmouth, um, as a Portsmouth neutral. Ultimately, I, I'm not a Portsmouth supporter, but I probably would give him the other summer. I probably would give him another summer. I do rate Danny Cowan. I think what he did at Lincoln was brilliant. Did have a great time at Huddersfield, but maybe um, at Portsmouth another summer. You can see what happens next year. I don't know. Just to see what you've got to say, Portsmouth fans. Is Danny Cowan the right man to take you to the next level this season? They've shown signs of a, so sh- signs of a side uh, that really have been and look like a really quite good a, g- a good outfit, but for too much of the season, there's been inconsistency, and that has held them back. So in the end, 10th they finished. I thought they finished 7th, just outside that top 6. It wasn't to be, uh, yeah, 3 wrong with that prediction. Next them, ninth in the league, Bolton finished there. I thought they finished 11th, so only two places out, to be fair. Only two places. I'll take that. I will take that, and I was very, very clear with what I said about Bolton at the start of the season they of course sorted themselves out on, on, on the financial side of things they were very very they were in good stead going into the season with the players that they brought in I think Ian Everett's a really really good manager and like I said you know, getting promoted back in uh, back from League 2 into League 1 was a really big achievement for them and it's brilliant to see a side that have had such a dramatic downfall start to rebuild themselves they really are starting to do that and I think they certainly will take this campaign um, and they'll take it really really well and so they should do I mean they did two places harder than they thought they would but I always knew Baltimore were going to come into this season um, and, and have a good one because of the size of the football club and that doesn't get you anywhere really but it, it does help you certainly uh, the, the window they had was really good the manager they've got again is, is really quite uh, is, is really quite interesting and I think a really good manager he plays a really attractive style of football and that will get you far I think it, with, with time and, and with the right training with the right players that can be really really quite helpful and can prove to be very very successful so I always thought they would be fine there was no fear of them getting relegated for me it was going to be a safe mid-table finish that they were going to be fine in, in, in League 1 didn't really think they were going to do as well as they did in the sense that they were, of course, competing for a, a late top six fight. Of course, they started the season really, really quite well. Then they dropped off quite dramatically. And then a really busy summer transfer window brought in a lot of players. Um, and again, that can go one of two ways. Can that completely fall your season off completely? Or can that give you the real bolster that they, the Bolton needed? In the end, it, it, did, it did just that. It really bolted the squad. The form turned around massively. And they went on to, in the end, go on a brilliant run and, and be in touching distance of a top six place. And then a few were they were playing catch up which didn't help at all and a few results when you're playing catch up you can't have a few of these results that just aren't good enough and then in the end they sort of fall away but really good season for Bolton again I think next season could be their year I think when you look at the players that they've already got and then you add to that squad I think they could have a really good season for me they did better than I thought they were two places higher they finished ninth in the game but fair play to Bolton next season could be really really good with the right transfer window with the right summer that could be a really quite special year but I went with uh, 11 for them in the end they finished ninth they do play two places higher than I thought they would finish. So eighth in the league, Oxford United finished, and I got it spot on, the nice Spot on. It's a rarity, but I got it right. Uh, eighth, I predicted. Eighth, Oxford United finished, and as a season, if I could summarise a season in, in quite a short way, I'd say I'm happy with it. I am happy with it. It's a disappointment we couldn't finish in the playoffs, and we were in the playoffs for quite a long time, so I thought we might be able to better my prediction, um, but it wasn't to be. We do finish outside those playoff places, a competitive, competitive season, so many sides going for those top six places, and 
you know, it is a shame we can't have our third consecutive attempt in those playoffs. But like I said, we're going to have to learn. We have to learn from the mistakes we made. A few dodgy results come the end of the season. But you look back on the season we've had, we've had some really quite frustrating results. The one I've already mentioned, the Cheltenham defeat at Gillingham we drew at home. You know, those are the results um, that we'll look back on and we go, if only we got that, if only we'd gone there and, and got more than more, more than nothing or more than just a point, and then where would we be? And, that, and that'll be something that we'll have to look back on and we'll have to reflect on, we'll have to learn from. But yeah, I got that prediction right in the end. I would have hoped it was a little bit higher. I uh, hope that we could be really talking about a, a playoff campaign for Oxford but there we go I got to do get it right though 8th Ox United finish and 8th I predicted I'm happy I've got at least one right will we get any more right let's go and wait and see so 7th in the league Plymouth Argyle they finish in that position they'll be happy with that season really quite happy disappointing it ended with a 5 0 defeat to MK Johns ultimately are the reason they're not playing in those playoff places uh, but across the season they've been really really quite good where did I predict them I hear you asked 20th 20th in the league, only just staying up, 13 places out. A horrific, horrific prediction. Um, and that just shows, that although I'm not taking any, uh, it's, it's a horrific prediction, don't get me wrong. But they've had a really, really good season. And they don't, certainly, they clearly surprised me. Um, I didn't realise how much they surprised me. They really, really have surprised me, apparently. Um, but they have. They've been really, really good this year. And although it's going to end remembering that horrific defeat to MK Dons, which is the reason why they're not in the top six. They've had a really good season across the, across the 40-odd games, 46 games. Really good at home, but also picking some really important wins away as well. Of course, they had a really quite difficult Ryan Logue starting the season doing really well there. Then he left the club to go to Preston. Then Stephen Schumacher came in as an assistant turned manager with a slight drop off, but then you know got a real run going then. And they thought they'd be comfortably finishing the top since they beat Oxford a few weeks ago. And I thought that was going to be I mean, at the start of the start of April they beat Oxford. I thought that 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 could be the result that certifies them a place in the top six. We all said there that the winner of that game was going to guarantee themselves a place. In the end, both Oxford and Plymouth aren't in there. Seventh and eighth in the end, those teams finish. And that felt like a game, and that felt like a, a really pivotal moment in the season for both sides when we thought the winner of that would definitely be competing in the playoffs, at least. But it wasn't to be. Both sides miss out. Plymouth miss out on the final day. Disappointing end. Really quite disappointing end to the campaign. But in the end, they'll, they'll certainly take it. Don't get me wrong. A brilliant, brilliant season for Plymouth Argyle. So much to build on. So much to learn from. Um, but a really quite uh, amazing campaign for them. 13 places out, though. That's horrific. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully try and improve Plymouth. And I've, they've, definitely, they've definitely shut me up this season. Um, and, uh, yeah, don't know what I was thinking of doing that prediction. But clearly got that very, very wrong. So sixth in the league, then Wickham Wanderers. Of course, they got relegated from the championship last season. I went with a finish of ninth when I predicted them. Three places out. Not awful. Better than Plymouth, uh, but but still not quite there. Um, with Wickham Wanderers, they seem to do what Wickham Wanderers have done for for quite a few years, especially under Gareth Ainsworth. To fly expectations and always try and find a way to frustrate teams but certainly, certainly do very, very well for themselves. Of course, a surprise promotion. I don't think they won't mind me saying that. A surprise promotion into the championship uh, two seasons ago, beating Ox in the playoff final in very Wickham fashion, nearly staying up. But I thought there'd be a bit of a drop-off when they came back down to League One. Could they get themselves going? Could they motivate themselves again to go for another top six finish? Well, it's Wickham Wanderers. Of course they can. And uh, sixth in the league, they finished only just on the final day, getting in those top six places. Of course, Plymouth's defeat certainly helped them do that. But they did beat Burton on the final day. Playoffs will be coming to them. MK Dons, they've got in the semi-final. I'm looking forward to watching those games and watching both of those legs. But... Yeah, three places out. It's not brilliant. But again, like I said, it's not as bad as, as Plymouth by any stretch. I mean, we'll see how Wickham get on in the playoffs. If you know anything about Wickham in the playoffs in League One, they seem to do quite well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But in the end, Wickham finished sixth. I thought they finished ninth. So fair play to them. Much better. Well, not much better, but better than I thought they'd do. So fifth in the league, then I went with Sunderland, and Sunderland finished fifth. So don't worry, there's no more. That is my second spot on prediction when I did this at the start of the season. Happy with that. Like I said, don't worry, there's no more. Um, but will Sunderland take that? I think they probably will, to be honest with you. A few weeks ago, it looked like they weren't going to be in the top six. They're going to be really happy to finish in those playoff places. Got a bit of criticism at the start of the season when I did these. A lot of Sunderland fans maybe thought they could do better than that. They go in those top two places, finally get out of League One, something they've been trying to do for a long time. But like I said, a few weeks ago, they were hovering around 7th. And, of course, they sat their manager. And Alex Neal came in. They were dropping down to places like 7th out of those playoff places. And looked like they couldn't get in the top six. Well, they have done that now. 5th in the league. A brilliant run under Alex Neal in recent weeks. has got them into that position. Um, and, uh, yeah, they do finish 5th in the league. A playoff campaign awaits for them. They've got Sheffield Wednesday in the semi-final. How will that go? I'll be interested to see. That's going to be a really quite fascinating game. Two sides who have been really, really good this season. 4th uh, and 5th. Sheffield Wednesday and Sunderland 
Ireland. Um, and that's going to be a fascinating semi-final, very difficult semi-final for both of those sides. I look forward to that. But yeah, Sunderland fifth. I predict them to come fifth. Very, very happy and excited to see what happens in those semi-finals uh, in those playoff campaigns. I think it's going to be really, really quite interesting. But I got another one right. Don't worry. There's no more. Right then, moving on to fourth, Sheffield Wednesday. I predicted them to win the league. I got that three wrong. I thought Sheffield Wednesday would win the title. Um, of course, a lot of financial difficulty. The points deduction, of course, last year meant they did get relegated into League One. But I still thought they had the quality within that squad to maybe win the league or at least finish the top two. But I did go in the end to, with, with them to finish uh, and, and win the title. Um, it wasn't to be. They, they finish uh, fourth. But again, they'll, they'll take that. They'll take that because similar, similar to Sunderland, really, they spent quite a lot of this season outside those top six places. And at those points in the campaign, but it maybe didn't even look like they were going to get in those playoff places. But they have done that now. Of course, they'll be facing Sunderland in those playoff semifinals. Um, and I look forward to watching them in the playoff finals because recently their form's been really, really quite good. And that brilliant form of recent weeks has got them into that top six and again it's going to be a really really quite uh, dramatic end to the season I can I can certainly predict that certainly can't predict Sheffield Wednesday uh, at the start of the season though because I did think they win the league it wasn't to be but have to wait and see what happens there three places out in the end but yeah I think they'll probably take that. It wasn't a league title like I predicted them to finish, but they've got a chance to get promoted back in to the championship. So then third in the league, MK Dons, another surprise side. They did get horribly, horribly wrong. Ten places out. I thought MK Dons would finish 13th in the league. Um, in the end, like I said, they finished third. A brilliant, brilliant season for MK Dons. Liam Manning, uh, what he's done at MK Dons uh, this season has been really, really quite good. Um, I'd say fantastic, to be honest with you. There's a chance they could finish in the top two, but it wasn't to be because of Rotherham United's win on the the final day, of course, their thumping win against Plymouth Argument. They could, they could easily get in the second, get to second in the league. But Rotherham United didn't do them a favour at all, and uh, yeah, they have to go through the playoff places. But. MK Dons have had a brilliant, brilliant campaign. They've certainly surprised me just looking at that prediction. The football they've played under Liam Manning this season has been absolutely brilliant. Some of the players within that squad this season have been absolutely sublime as well. Scott Twine, a man. Harry Darling, another. Um, a, such a good, good season for MK Dons. A brilliant campaign for them. Played, like I said, such attractive brand of football. And they find that they're going forward, they look really quite good as well. But defensively, they, they, they're not a bad side at all. Um, a really good side to watch. I look forward to watching them in those playoff finals against Wickham. Sort of playoff finals, playoff semi-finals, and then potentially a final against Wickham. One, intrigued to see what's going to happen there. A little bit unlucky not to be automatically going up, but that is football. And uh, yeah, there we go. Third in the league. Got that horribly wrong. They finished thirteenth uh, in my prediction, but finish off third. They'll certainly, certainly take that. So second in the league, of course, Rotherham United. I thought they'd finished third. So only one place out, second and third. I think I'll take that. That isn't too bad at all. Um, I, I thought I did think Rotherham United were, were going to be fine. I think they, they were always going to be definitely competing in the top six. I thought that maybe Sheffield Wednesday could, could edge them. And I, I, know, Ipswich, I thought they could edge them as well. Ipswich this summer, I mentioned a minute ago, I thought they had a really, really good summer transfer window that could really sort of maybe push down the other sides. They did have a decent window, Rotherham United. But I thought the other windows, the other sides, they could... They, they could just do better than Rotherham and, and, and sort of over overtake them looking at look, looking at their squad. But it wasn't to be, and I got that wrong. But Rotherham United fans, they won't care that I got that wrong. They automatically be promoted into the championship, back into the championship. There was a point in the season where they could go on and win the league. I think a lot of Rotherham United fans felt they could go on and win the league. But a really quite dodgy run at a key point of the season meant they couldn't do such a thing. And second in the league is where they finish. They'll definitely, definitely take that ultimately because they will be getting promoted. Would they have gone and, and hoped to go and get a title when they, looked like they really could have got one? Maybe, but it wasn't to be. Second in the league for them. I got that one place out. I thought they finished third, but I don't think Rotherham fans will care at all what I think because they got, in, in the end, their promotion they really did want. So fair play to them. So finally then, first in the league, Wigan Athletic. Where did I predict the champions of League One to finish this season? Sixth. So five places out. I did think Wigan were going to get in the top six. We know last season. I mean, by the way, what an achievement uh, with, with Liam Richardson has done at Wigan and what achievement Wigan Athletic have done. Looking at where they were last season, only just staying up with that financial difficulty and really sort of pushing on to try and stay in the league. And they did such a thing. And then a really good summer transfer window. And in the end now, winning the league. What a story Wigan Athletic have, uh, have created, um, especially this season, going on to, to win the title. Fantastic stuff. And I did think, sorting the things out financially, which they did do, going and having a really, really good summer transfer window, bringing in Jack Watmore, bringing in Max Power, bringing in some really, really quality players. Um, I thought they'd be fine. And to be honest, they really have done more than fine. First in the league, 
course, like I said, they got that five places. I did think they'd be competing in the top six, but I didn't think they'd go on and win the league, which they have gone and done. So fair play to them. Of course, we're going to have to do it with Crown Champions on the final day because of their win over Shrewsbury Town. Fair play to them. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been my reaction to my original uh, prediction I did at the start of the season. Some horrific, some are okay. Not many spot on, only two this year. Let me know how many you thought I'd get uh, in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you're at your most surprised team. I think we've clearly found I've got some real surprises this season. And fair play to those sides. A brilliant, brilliant season. What a campaign it's been. Certainly looking at that. I've been banging on about how this season has been unpredictable. That is a clear representation of how it's been unpredictable. Let me know in the comments down below. I'll be replying and responding to all of those as per usual. Until next time, I've been Jack. It's been the Unfound Podcast. Take care, stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. See you in a bit.